In remote areas of Alaska, scientists have dug a deep tunnel beneath the tundra. Their work revealed something horrible, and now the remains of extinct animals are emerging from the frozen ground everywhere. A vast underground cemetery has begun to thaw setting off a time bomb that could have frightening consequences for humanity. Scientists say there's a geological time bomb hidden beneath Alaska, and it could be catastrophic. Located in the far northwest of North America Alaska has always been a wild and beautiful place. And although the city of Anchorage today has a population of around 300,000, much of the region is made up of small, scattered communities. There, it seems, life has changed little over the centuries. However, a disturbing secret has been buried for thousands of years in this magnificent landscape of ice and snow. And it has the potential to devastate Earth as we know it today. But what could be this ticking time bomb that lies beneath the Alaskan wilderness? Well, scientists have made some disturbing discoveries outside the city of Fairbanks. In the 1960s, U.S. Army researchers decided to dig a tunnel near Fairbanks, the second largest city in the state. And, apparently, the military's goal was to study the natural phenomenon known as permafrost, or permafrost. This is a catch-all term for the type of frozen ground that covers about 85% of the entire state. According to scientists, permafrost covers about 25% of the northern hemisphere. Made up of substances such as gravel, sand and soil, these layers typically appear when the ground remains at freezing temperatures for more than two years. And permafrost doesn't just appear on land, it can also be found beneath the depths of our planet's oceans. As you might expect, this phenomenon is more common in regions where temperatures rarely rise above zero degrees centigrade, which means that there is often permafrost in Eastern Europe, Russia, China, in Greenland and Alaska. And while these frozen regions can be relatively shallow in some areas, they can also extend more than 1,000 meters. Today, scientists are aware that permafrost falls into two categories. Continuous and discontinuous. In this first group, a large area such as Siberia is covered by a single sheet of frozen ground. Discontinuous permafrost, on the other hand, is divided into several pieces. And while some of these areas may melt seasonally, others remain present all year round. Over the years, both types of permafrost have contributed significantly to scientists' understanding of our climate. However, experts believe that these resources are diminishing. For example, National Geographic claimed that during the 20th century, the temperature of these frozen layers increased by more than 4 degrees centigrade. And over time, this situation may only get worse. For those living in the Arctic, permafrost poses difficult challenges. Building something in the frozen tundra can be difficult, for example, and the heat of construction sometimes makes the situation worse by causing the ground to thaw. But, over time humans adapted to these conditions, and now entire cities exist in some of the most icy corners of Earth. Additionally, when the Fairbanks Tunnel began to be dug, the permafrost in the area had changed little in hundreds of years. In contrast, as temperatures rise around the world, the frozen ground beneath the Arctic is warming. And as these areas begin to thaw, they could trigger a chain of catastrophic events. In any case, the tunnel is certainly still relevant. Currently, it is part of the Cold Regions Research and Engineering Laboratory, CRREL, where scientists study the unique behavior of permafrost, including how it may respond to climate change. And for experts such as U.S. Army Corps of Engineers geochemist Dr. Thomas Douglas, this work gives them the chance to take a fascinating look into the past. Indeed, while some perceive the tundra as a somewhat empty land, Permafrost is in fact filled with prehistoric remains that have remained preserved in the frozen ground for thousands of years. And it's especially evident in the Fairbanks Tunnel. Some visitors have even reported seeing mammoth bones and tusks protruding from the walls and floor. Permafrost is like an entire ecosystem frozen in time and overflowing with the remains of long-dead life. From extinct woolly rhinos to ancient plants, virtually everything that walked or grew on this soil has been preserved in the frozen wastes beneath its surface. But despite the fascinating appeal of these remains, they also pose a real problem. Like all other forms of life, dead or alive, they are made of carbon and lots of it. In 2018, Douglas told NPR,
permafrost contains twice as much carbon as is currently in the Earth's atmosphere. This represents 1,600 billion tons. And although this carbon is currently trapped in permafrost, Douglas and his colleagues began to wonder what will happen when the Arctic's frozen soil begins to thaw. So the team launched an experiment to find out, and the results are cause for alarm. During their investigation, CRREL scientists drilled into the permafrost and removed sections of ice, each reaching about 2 cm in length and 1 cm in diameter. Then the experts took the samples to a laboratory, where they allowed them to slowly warm up. And soon after, the team began to notice something strange happening. It's a material that has remained frozen for 25,000 years enthuses Douglas. And given the right environmental conditions, it came back vigorously to life. Surprisingly, ancient bacteria had become trapped in the permafrost, as temperatures rose, they woke up and got to work. However, this is not the first time that ancient bacteria have been revived after a long stay in ice. The phenomenon has also been observed in Russia, where according to the Daily Telegraph, around 66% of the land is permafrost. And, unfortunately, the country is also experiencing some of the worst warming on the planet. In 2015, it was reported that temperatures in Russia were rising at twice the rate of anywhere else on the planet. Yet with so much permafrost to wade through, residents have long since adapted to the frigid conditions. In the city of Yakutsk, for example, buildings are traditionally built on stilts that bypass the active zone, which is constantly melting and refreezing. Unfortunately, however, warming temperatures have meant that even these homes have become unstable. And in this chaotic environment, the Bacillus anthracis bacteria could resurface. Commonly associated with biological warfare, this substance is the cause of anthrax, a potentially deadly infection that once terrorized the frozen landscape of Siberia. According to experts, Bacillus anthracis spores come from a natural reaction in the soil. Then, when humans come into contact with this bacteria, they can develop nasty blisters that can lead to further complications. And while some communities have gone decades without an anthrax outbreak, thawing permafrost is now releasing the infection globally. Anthrax spores can stay alive in permafrost for up to 2,500 years Yakutsk biologist Boris Kershengeltz told the Daily Telegraph in 2019. It's scary, given how much cemeteries are thawing of animals from the 19th century. Once out of the permafrost and brought to our temperatures, they become active again. According to the British newspaper, a 2011 study identified parts of Siberia's Yakutia region, where anthrax outbreaks had occurred. And, alarmingly, these areas also apparently turned out to be where the warming was most extreme. In the Arctic, rising temperatures are also believed to be behind the first deaths in seven decades from anthrax. Back in Alaska, Researchers noted that the resurrected bacteria began reacting with dead animal and plant matter trapped in the permafrost, transforming the carbon into methane and carbon dioxide. And as scientists know only too well, it is precisely these gases that are responsible for climate change. So far, Alaska is known for absorbing more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere than it emits. But as permafrost thaws, this process could be reversed. Indeed, in 2017, scientists in the north of the region observed the first evidence of this worrying trend. And if these additional carbon reserves were to be released, it could be a disaster for the planet. At the moment, around 1,400 gigatons of carbon are thought to be found in permafrost across the world. This total is apparently about four times the level of carbon humans have released into the air over the past 260 years. Even our planet's atmosphere currently contains only half of it. But ancient bacteria aren't the only ones contributing to the release of greenhouse gases in frozen regions of the Earth. Melting permafrost can also expose underground reservoirs to the open air, and methane can thus be released into the atmosphere. And although experts continue to agree that human activity is the largest producer of greenhouse gases, thawing permafrost is quickly becoming a serious contender. In fact, the phenomenon is believed to have resulted in the release of 1.2 to 2.2 million tons of emissions annually in recent years. To put things in context, thawing permafrost produces as much greenhouse gas as all of Japan, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. 
and experts estimate that the volume of carbon released this way will continue to increase over the years. Incredibly, these figures are even expected to surpass those of the United States, currently the second largest producer of carbon dioxide in the world. So, what exactly happens when large amounts of these gases end up in the atmosphere? Well, the outlook looks bleak from a climate change perspective. Essentially, substances such as carbon dioxide radiate energy, thereby warming the planet. And if such a process is also natural, its effects have accelerated in recent years. If more carbon is released by thawing permafrost, it will make an already out-of-control situation worse. In fact, experts estimate that our planet could gain up to 6 degrees centigrade over the next 100 years. And if this scenario comes true, the Earth will be very different from the planet we know today. How worried should we be? Well, according to some scientists, the situation is precarious. In 2018, NASA chemist Charles Miller told NPR, we have evidence that Alaska has gone from being a net absorber of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere to a net exporter of the gas to atmosphere, and with ancient bacteria, poised to return to life in the northern hemisphere, things could get worse. You can make the analogy of a big train about to derail ecologist Merit Turetsky of the University of Guelph in Ontario, told the Toronto Star in 2011. Once it starts, the permafrost thaw happens slowly, but you can't stop it. And this lack of possible control makes everyone nervous. Yet scientists are currently unsure of the magnitude of the impact this geological time bomb might have. For example, if there is a thaw, erosion could mean that much of the carbon could be washed away by the Arctic oceans. A warmer environment can also help new vegetation grow in the tundra, and this flora is in turn likely to reabsorb some of the harmful gases. In the long term, however, there is little doubt that climate change will radically alter the world we live in. And while we have yet to see how much of an impact thawing permafrost will have on the world as a whole, the phenomenon has already had a very noticeable effect on Earth's frozen landscapes. Essentially, permafrost acts as an adhesive that sticks together the layers of rocks and minerals that make up the surface of our planet. As it melts, it can radically change the landscape. Almost overnight, lakes can empty, rivers can change direction, and banks can disappear. And in places where frozen water makes up more than three quarters of the ground, the consequences have been extreme. In Alaska, for example, thawing permafrost has caused a dramatic change in the local terrain. Areas that were once covered in vegetation are now inundated with water from melting, causing new lakes to form. In other places, conversely, plants that previously struggled to survive now thrive on the thawed soil. In Canada's Northwest Territories, researchers noticed that a cliff had collapsed as a result of thawing permafrost. And in doing so, experts noted that a resulting waterfall had drained a nearby lake, emptying some 3 million liters of water in two hours. Yes, such dramatic changes can happen in a surprisingly short period of time. And according to Turetsky, we should take these developments as a warning. In 2019, she told the Anchorage Daily News. It can happen very quickly, even within a few months. This was a wake-up call for the climate science community. What happened at some of our studied sites is very different from what we knew before. Ultimately, no one can be sure what the full effects of thawing permafrost might be. And it's this uncertainty that troubles experts like Turetsky, and while she believes action needs to be taken to reduce man-made emissions and thus hopefully avoid environmental catastrophe, the worry remains that it could all prove to be too little, too late. Thank you for watching, please don't forget to like and subscribe.